Good evening. It's Dr. Rody. I don't know if there's anyone else out there yet. Just wanted to share a little bit of information with everybody uh, about the scary times right now. I know I've done a couple of other videos that a couple of patients have told me they've seen. Uh, talking about everything that's going on and again I want to remind everybody to kind of remain calm and work on things that help you uh, decrease anxiety and stress in your lives and so like I said before prayer meditation uh, going for a walk outside working in the yard even if you have a work uh, yard to go outside and work in um, and uh, obviously things to decrease your cortisol because stress increases cortisol so Working on those things are good. Um, getting enough sleep is important too. Hopefully people aren't spending all their time uh, just watching TV or being on Facebook Lives like this, but hopefully uh, people are uh, able to uh, work on some useful things as well. So sleep is a great thing to do. I see Carolyn, you joined in. Thanks for coming along. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, throw them up on the screen and I'll try to answer them. I really want this to be an interactive uh, event uh, where I can answer people's questions. So I just wanted to talk about some basic things that are helpful for immune uh, health. Um, again, some basic supplements uh, to take. Uh, I think like I'd mentioned, uh, sleep is important. Um, one of the most important things for everyone I think is diet. And that's where I'd really encourage everyone to um, look forward to the talk I'm going to do next week. I'm still working on that, basically on um, improving your diet and um, how the healthy gut ties into a healthy immune system. And I think that's one of the things most of us have figured out now, um, that we were susceptible to the virus and we want to try and stay as healthy as we can to keep our immune systems healthy. And diet is the premier way to do that. Uh, I just had a discussion with somebody uh, in the office today about fixing autoimmune design, disease with diet alone. And I think working on uh, an improved diet is a simple thing to start with now. Uh, now the problem is when I've been to the grocery store, see people buying a lot of convenience foods. And that's really the opposite of what we need to be doing to improve our health. Uh, and so really buying uh, more fresh fruits and vegetables and increasing those, really working on health habits while we're home now. I've had a couple of patients that have been doing cooking classes at home with family members that are home from school or work. And I think that's an excellent time to start incorporating some different uh, foods and maybe looking up recipes for what I would consider one of my favorite diets, a uh, Mediterranean diet. Uh, Danielle, I'm glad you joined. Wendy, hi there. Uh, glad to see you guys aboard. Um, looking at a Mediterranean diet, which um, really ties together more with the Mediterranean lifestyle, I call it, and that's low stress, uh, something we can learn uh, from in the United States, but uh, basically a uh, diet where people uh, eat more fruits and vegetables, uh, more seafood and chicken, rather than uh, relying mostly on meat and processed foods like we do here. So, hey, houses, glad you joined in too. Um, and so working on some diets for um, Laura, hi there, glad to see you on board. Working on some uh, Mediterranean diet things that you can add in uh, and recipes. Actually, I uh, wish I had the uh, cookbook that we use uh, for that that has lots of recipes. And uh, trying some of those new things out, exploring uh, new things for your taste buds really. Because sometimes as you start changing those things, uh, family members might not agree with those plans. But we all have, I think, about 20 foods that we like to eat if you ask most people and you take a survey. And so uh, expanding your repertoire is a great, uh, great time to do that right now. So fruits, fresh fruits and vegetables, pick up those extra vitamins, the bioflavonoids, uh, all those wonderful things that will uh, help. And then uh, adding in 
other wonderful things. Uh, somebody just popped in there and said, hey, how about some fermented veggies? And I think those are great. Um, you know, I'm a German kid. I grew up eating sauerkraut, but not everyone likes sauerkraut. So making your own fermented vegetables is a wonderful way to choose what you want to eat uh, that's fermented. Um, Anne's going to do uh, a live on making kombucha. We've always done that in the office, but obviously we can't invite a group into the office right now. So she's going to put that together and push out how to make kombucha. Obviously, you can buy that, but it's far cheaper to make your own and so a simple way to get started with that and doing that that's something that everyone can enjoy and you can really make some interesting creations if you um, do a second fermentation I think today we had a mango ginger one that we were drinking in the office uh, so really limited by what you can find uh, that's organic and clean to put into your kombucha as a second fermentation um, what else uh, can we add in? Lots of other choices for that. Uh, bone broth, um, you know, we've renamed that. Obviously, grandmother's chicken soup was wonderful, um, and now we're using the label bone broth. Uh, Walmart and uh, Aldi both carry the bone broth, and it's a simple thing to pick that up, and then you can make soup out of it by adding your organic vegetables and that to it. So good time to try some of those new recipes and add those in. Um, other things that are helpful, uh, sunshine uh, started out with a nice day today. It was a little cool to bear much skin outside. I was up early this morning picking up some sticks from our windstorm, um, but I had a jacket on. So uh, vitamin D really still comes down to taking a vitamin D supplement right now. Um, and that is important and I think probably one of the most important things I've figured out to keep your immune system in shape. And so really thinking about um, how much do you start with that? Uh, everyone always asks. I tell everyone adults should start out with 5,000 units, um, actually start with a baseline measurement and um, actually um, trying to see if it's legal for me to do something fun at the office. I think it would be great if everyone got a vitamin D level check, but uh, sometimes cost is in a prohibitive thing. So we're working on a drive-through uh, vitamin D uh, test at the office, literally. I mean, drive in, we'll have somebody draw the blood in the parking lot, send it off, and then we can get your results back to you. But I'm checking whether that's legal to do that uh, or if we're going to get in a lot of hot water with that. But I thought we'd do that and try and promote the vitamin D level at a low cost for everybody to get that done. And then obviously adding in a vitamin D supplement. So starting with uh, 5,000 units a day for an adult is great. And then rechecking the level. And uh, my ideal level is really somewhere in the 50 to 60 range. Normal labs consider a 30 to 100 normal. Um, and I know some people say it should be higher than that. The problem is if you get over 80, you start to actually suppress stem cell um, release uh, and you need your stem cells to heal your body. So really trying to keep it in the 50 to 60 range is an ideal way to do that. Kids, you can use a liquid vitamin D, and I think a simple place to start dosing for that is 30 units per pound, uh, and then again, measuring a level to see where you're at. So a uh, simple place really to get going with uh, the vitamin D. Uh, other things that are good for your immune health, um, I take some extra vitamin C every day, and I think that's also a good thing to do. All of the suppliers that I've had online have been uh, sold out. I know you can still find it. We managed to find some bulk uh, vitamin C capsules, and so we do have those available in the office. And if you need some of those and you can't find them, um, you can uh, do a curbside pickup. So here we go back to the drive through idea um, to pick up some of the vitamin C capsules to get you through right now. Obviously, talking about vitamin C, um, we can do high-dose vitamin C IV. I actually have the Wuhan protocol because they were treating people in China very successfully with vitamin C infusions. And I've got the protocols from some friends that do the uh, IV infusions as well. And so that is something we can offer. Unfortunately, again, vitamin C has uh, been in tight supply because people are jumping on the bandwagon with that. But as long as we can get it, we'll offer that. Uh, as an alternative for people to boost their immune system and keep things healthy as well. Um, one of the other things, if we're talking about IV uh, treatments, um, obviously we do things uh, with ozone and UVBIs or ultraviolet light treatments. Those are also excellent ways to uh, really treat the 
um, virus or to keep the immune system balanced and it's really about balance and that's one thing I do want to clarify everybody talks about boosting your immune system well that's great unless you have autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's uh, or rheumatoid lupus something like that you really don't want to boost your immune system because that may drive things in the wrong direction but uh, really balancing the immune system is the ideal way to do it but for most people uh, in the United States our immune systems are not doing so well mostly because of our sad American diet and so really working to boost the immune system is the right way to put that but you do have to have some uh, sense about that um, anybody have any questions that I can answer otherwise otherwise I'm just gonna keep rambling about things here um, other supplements I've added in I take some zinc which is also good for um, the immune system um, my multivitamin that I take has uh, 10 milligrams in it, I think, and I take an extra 30 milligrams uh, with that right now. Uh, gut health, we talked about that a little bit, is important. So what else can you add in for uh, gut health? Arabinogalactan um, is a prebiotic. So if you've got gut bacteria that are healthy, you want to feed them and keep them happy. Obviously, you get that from uh, the fiber and fruits and vegetables. That's why I mentioned increasing the intake of those. But uh, for those people that, um, well, have a difficult palate, let's put it that way, and they don't like fruits and vegetables, you can add in some of the arabinogalactan, and I think that's a helpful way to add some prebiotics in. And then if you don't like kombucha and sauerkraut or bone broth, you can always uh, do the standby pro prebiotics, which I think is helpful. And uh, I think taking uh, a probiotic on a regular basis is a good thing as well right now to keep the immune system healthy. And one of the things uh, that's important is drinking lots of filtered water. Um, and uh, I'm going to take a quick break and have some. Because as I'm rambling, my mouth's getting dry. But filtered water, I think, is an important thing to do. So... Um, Another thing I've been doing in the office, and I don't know how many people have heard about this, is colloidal silver. Uh, silver is antibacterial, and uh, everybody in the office has their nose spray uh, that was given to them. We've been doing that between uh, patients, so using it in a nose spray form. Um, putting in, uh, just uh, taking a teaspoon, uh, swishing it around in your mouth, gargling, and then swallowing it is another good way to do that. Uh, anything you can do to keep, keep the respiratory passages clear um, of virus, so the water, and then obviously the silver helps. Uh, another product that I really love is called Biocidin. They make a wonderful um, spray form of that. We use it a lot to treat uh, bacterial and viral infections in the gut, but it works beautifully in the throat spray form. Um, I use that when I travel before I get on the airplane, uh, after I get off the airplane, and then three times a day around that time just to prevent uh, getting anything else that's on the big tin can uh, and so we've been using that uh, in the office as well in a spray form but they do make um, sublingual form that's absorbed uh, in capsules as well the capsules really work better for gut issues and that's what we use most of that for but the throat spray works great just for routine viruses not necessarily the COVID-19 or the influenza but uh, we, there are other viruses that go around, and if you start to get a sore throat, using the spray three times a day or four times a day will a lot of times kick that before it turns into something, uh, especially if you combine it with the silver, so all very useful things. Um, questions? Let's see. Do I see any questions anywhere? Oh, how much zinc? I think uh, 10 to 30 milligrams. I think it's a great place to start once a day. Um, and... Uh, you don't want to go overboard on that because you need to keep that balanced with some of the other minerals as well. I actually brought some props along. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, the Pure Encapsulations brand that we use a lot in the office is zinc citrate. There we go. I don't know. I can't. Probably can't. There we go. Zinc citrate. I think I can read it on the screen. Hopefully you guys can. Um, but that's simple. I take one capsule a day with that to add it in. And this is 30 milligrams. So I'm getting 40 milligrams with the 10 that I have in my multivitamin. Uh, so we just boosted things a little bit. What else can I answer? Any other specific things uh, as far as questions with uh, supplements, other activities and that? I'm going to go in depth on some of these things um, on the uh, gut health and immune health that I'm going to do next week. So we're going to do a little more in-depth dive on that and really go through some details with that. Uh, I think that's an important thing. 
Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to ramble about. Uh, I think the vitamin D, uh, going back to that for a minute, uh, is looking at vitamin D's main job in the body really is to make sure that abnormal cells die appropriately. And if abnormal cells don't die appropriately, the ultimate end result with that obviously is cancer. And so vitamin D is one of the best things we can do to prevent all types of cancer uh, from getting a foothold in the body. And that goes back to um, your macrophages, which are the Pac-Men that gobble up invaders like bacteria and viruses. And the vitamin D makes sure that those stay um, um, uh, healthy and functioning properly. And if you can read questions, um, I can't see anything on the screen here. What have you got? Um, I think essential oils have a lot of benefits to them. We actually diffuse thieves in multiple locations in the office, and I think that's very helpful. Uh, we've had people put thieves on the inside of their masks when they go out shopping. I think that's helpful as well. I think that's how it was originally designed to be used uh, inside of a mask or a kerchief worn over the face and the nose if you look at the uh, stories uh, and history behind it. Um, but I think taking some of those orally frankincense is a wonderful one that's also antibacterial, antiviral. So a lot of uses uh, for the oils. I don't have any specific suggestions on that. Um, uh, but those are all add-ins as well that you can use. Yep, well, that's true. Anne likes lavender and the moisturizer, so we use that also. Uh, plus, it smells great. <laughs> Um, we did that already. I think 30 milligrams a day, I think, is a reasonable place to start. So I'm getting 40 because my multivitamin has 10 in it, and then I added 30 to it as well. For adults, yes, we um, recommend 5,000 units as a starting dose, and then you have to get a level measured again uh, two to three months afterwards. Some people absorb it beautifully if they have a healthy gut, and other people need 7,500 to 10,000 units a day. Uh, and so it's really variable. Um, I take, I think, a total of 6,000 between my separate vitamin D and the thousand that's in my multivitamin um, and that keeps my level right at uh, 60 which is you know in the 50 to 60 range that I like. Now one thing I want to add with vitamin D and this is important to understand our vitamin D3 has K2 with it and it's important to understand that. I've actually had a physician come see me in the office with a new onset of kidney stones um, and he'd never had kidney stones before and he's in his 50s and is trying to figure out why he got kidney stones. Well, we figured out he was taking 10,000 units of vitamin D and he wasn't taking any vitamin K with it. Um, everybody seems to think that vitamin K is just for coagulation, but what vitamin uh, K actually does in the body as well as coagulation is it turns on the bone receptors so they can accept calcium. Vitamin D increases calcium absorption for the gut, and that's why we recommend it for people with osteopenia or osteoporosis uh, to help rebuild the bone, but you need the vitamin K to direct it to the bones or to the teeth. And yes, you can heal cavities in your teeth before you drill them, obviously, um, with using uh, higher doses of D with K to get that calcium where it goes. And if you don't have that vitamin K to activate those bone receptors, you end up uh, with calcium ending up uh, where you don't want it. So um, placking the blood vessels or, in his case, making kidney stones. And so the vitamin K is really important. I know a lot of people have vitamin D already. We have separate vitamin K. Um, but I just want to make sure if you're taking vitamin D that you also have the uh, vitamin K with it. Um, and so ours both the capsule and the liquid drops that we use for kids uh, or titration levels uh, has that combined in it already. So that's an important point. Uh, vitamin C. Well, um, a quick way to, I don't know if it's a quick way, but a good way to find out how much vitamin C you do is to take a vitamin C or do a vitamin C flush. Uh, you need some uh, vitamin C powder is the easiest way to do that. And um, start uh, a teaspoon in a glass of water down the hatch and then you keep doing that every 15 minutes or so until you get well a flush and that means your gut is going to empty out and then you tally it up and see how many milligrams of vitamin C it took uh, and then you've got a starting point to figure out how much vitamin C you can tolerate. 
Um, and what happens is if you're vitamin C deficient, it's going to take a lot more vitamin C to get to the flush because when you get to bowel tolerance, that's when it starts running over. So it's take, taking the glass of water and overfilling it. Uh, our body can only absorb so much vitamin C in, in a given time period. Um, but a quick way to figure out where you're at. I recommend people start a thousand milligrams twice a day right now to help with the immune system. Most people tolerate that pretty well. I actually take 2,000 twice a day myself. Been doing that for years um, and uh, really helps with that. Um, you can use a liposomal form of vitamin C because you get better absorption in the gut with that, so you can get a little bit higher um, tissue levels with that. Um, but the standard uh, buffered vitamin C works beautifully to bring up uh, the vitamin C level and help the immune system do its best job. So I think a thousand milligrams twice a day is a great place to start and then you can titrate it. I guess a big part of that is, um, you know, if you're somewhere where you're around sick people or uh, kids a lot, so school teachers, uh, people in the daycare, obviously the medical field, um, I think a little extra vitamin C is a good protection as well right now. Um, trying to think what else might be beneficial uh, right now to talk about as far as supplements. Um, you know, uh, we talked a bit about the probiotics and starting out with um, fermented foods. I think those are good. I don't know if anyone else has any specific questions uh, for the immune health. Okay, somebody asked, is uh, IV ozone better than a high-dose IV vitamin C? Uh, they are both a pro-oxidant, if you will. Uh, so vitamin C in the body and high-dose turns into um, hydrogen peroxide, which kills bacteria, viruses, uh, that sort of thing. And so that has an immediate effect. It works beautifully. That's what they were using, like I said, in Wuhan. They're starting to use it in uh, some of the hospitals in the United States. Imagine that when you don't have any of the cures, you turn to something that's been working for centuries. Um, ozone uh, also works beautifully. Uh, there are people using ozone. Uh, some of my colleagues are just using direct ozone. Uh, all you really need is a syringe and a small scalp uh, needle, so you can use a 27 gauge, which is really small, and you can easily um, infuse enough ozone to um, pretty quickly get relief from um, a viral cold or whatever uh, to prevent that from taking hold. I know I've got a colleague, he actually does intranasal ozone, which can uh, burn, uh, but if you take a breath and hold it, and then you squirt some ozone in both of the nostrils, hold it for a second, and then exhale, does a beautiful uh, job of uh, clearing sinuses and uh, beating a, an infection. But, you know, I think I'll stick with the vitamins, uh, with the colloidal silver nasal spray for right now, because ozone does sting. Uh, if you get it into the mucous membranes uh, like that, and so that would definitely wake you up. Um, hopefully that answers the question for uh, what to start with. Either one would work well. It's kind of what you have access to. Like I said, vitamin C has been in tight supply. The ozone I can make lots of because I have an oxygen tank uh, and I have an ozone generator, so that's easy. One thing I want to make sure, if you're going to start playing around with ozone, don't buy one online and start uh, thinking you're going to breathe this stuff. Remember, they have ozone warnings in big cities from uh, exhaust emissions. Ozone is actually uh, toxic to the uh, lung tissue, and so you can't breathe it unless you bubble it through an oil. So if you have an ozone bubbler, you can bubble the oxygen through the ozone, and you're getting just, or through the oil, and then you're getting just the ozonides, because it's the ozonides that actually do the work in the body. But you can't directly breathe ozone. It'll make you cough, uh, first of all, but it's actually very irritating to the respiratory uh, mucosa. And so you can't breathe the stuff. you got to inject it. Um, but I mentioned on one of my videos, you can also uh, do it rectally at home. And that may not be appealing to a lot of people, but it is simple to do. Um, the ozone in the IV, somebody asked how we do that. There are several different ways to do that. Like I said, direct ozone. So you think about your favorite thriller movie where they inject uh, a syringe full of air into the person that they kick off, right? Well, uh, remember, oxygen is 100% oxygen, and room air from the movie thrillers is 20% oxygen or somewhere around there. And the rest of it, the 80% is nitrogen. Nitrogen forms.
Bell's blood to dissolve. Um, you've heard of the bends for divers where they get oxygen bubbles in their blood and it can kill you. That's how room air will kill you, but oxygen won't do that. It's all purely absorbed. And so we use direct IV ozone where you literally uh, take a 60 or a 30 cc syringe and directly infuse the ozone into the blood. All you need is a small little catheter. If you do it on the top of the hand, on a wrist, on a small vein, you can actually feel it bubbling up your arm, up into your neck um, as it's entering the body. And then it goes to work and does its job. Um, and we also use UVBI, the ultraviolet light. Um, with ozone, and that's really a remarkable technology that we use to treat all kinds of things in the office. Um, but the UV uh, treatment literally makes a vaccine out of your own blood. What you're doing is drawing out blood, we mix it with ozone, and then we um, run it past a UV light on the way into the body. I think everybody's seen the UV lights that they have in restaurants or they even have in the hospitals to kill bacteria. And as you're running the blood, Past the UV light, it's killing the bacteria and viruses, whatever may be in the blood. And then the dead viral particles or mold particles, whatever uh, that we're treating, uh, are recognized by the immune system as invaders, and the body will start to build antibodies to that. And our immune system can access any part of the body. It's not blocked by the blood-brain barrier that we have uh, that limits uh, antibiotics and other treatment modalities. So our immune system can go anywhere. So if we've got something in the brain, uh, those antibodies to bacteria and viruses can get there, and that's what makes it such a neat treatment. The sad thing is uh, we used to use ozone in hospitals in the United States in the 30s and 40s. I actually have a Time magazine that talks about using uh, UVBI treatments in the hospitals. Uh, and it was FDA approved, but it's not used now. And it was, you know, basically driven into the uh, hospital closet by the uh, antibiotic producers. So here we go, big pharma again. Uh, and we've fallen in love with antibiotics, but unfortunately they're not working so well right now. And then if you have a viral thing, we really have very few things to treat viruses with. And so that's where the ozone is beautiful and we can offer that as a simple treatment. But, uh, you know, it's wonderful to think you're making a vaccine out of the own invaders for your body. Um, so we use it in the office for mold, for Lyme disease, um, all sorts of bacterial and viral treatments. Um, yeah, and so even pre-surgical treatments, we have people come in with that. Uh, we treated somebody with uh, malaria. I've never seen a case of malaria in central Illinois, but it turned out he was a missionary um, and had several relapses. And we successfully treated him with uh, a number of the UV treatments, which I think is just awesome. No side effects from antibiotics. And what we're doing is putting treat just basic healing oxygen into your body and uh, stimulating your immune system to do the job it needs to do or it wasn't doing properly. Um, uh, and so really a great modality that has no downside uh, that I have ever seen in the practice. We've used it for years, um, you know, other than the fact that it requires a needle. And of course, needle phobes may have some difficulty with that, but we've gotten past that. Um, and uh, for most people, they're able to tolerate the infusion. It's very simple to do. It takes about an hour. Um, so a, a great modality, but um, wholly underutilized in the United States, mainly because, well, big pharma wants us to use expensive medications. Right. Uh, one of the things Ann just mentioned, we do have uh, our chemotherapy patients uh, that come in for that. So patients that are undergoing cancer treatments, we actually use that to help stimulate their uh, or uh, support their immune systems. And actually the combination together works beautifully because we're also killing cancer cells with that. And so it's a beautiful combination treatment to use. Again, this is used to treat cancer in other countries in the world actually very successfully. Um, and again, not something that's uh, thought about in the United States. But again, as I mentioned, it's been around for a long time and was used in the hospitals in the past. So again, uh, lots of modalities that are available to treat this. And another reason I wanted to say, you know, don't be fearful about this. We have tools that we can help with. Any other questions? Two more. Okay, two more questions. Um, you were talking about vitamin C. Mm -hmm. 
any of these are helpful. So, you know, if you're working on fixing your immune system, adding in the supplements is beneficial. Obviously, the biggest issue is diet. And you got to come back to that because you can change your whole gut microbiome. And by that, I mean the bacteria in our gut. In a period of a week or two, you can completely change that. Um, and so diet is number one thing. Adding supplements in are things that we figure out by measuring uh, values normally. So I always suggest knowing where you're starting from, um, and then you can have a plan how much you need. But just adding those things in, what we would say empirically to uh, help boost the immune system right now, I think is a great idea to do that. Nobody's going to overdose on 5,000 units of vitamin D, uh, 30 units of zinc, or 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C twice a day. Um, and, you know, some people would say, well, you know, if you're taking it and don't need it, you're just going to have expensive urine. Well, okay, that's fine. Um, we all pay for insurance for our car, for our house, uh, and all these other things. You could say that's all money you threw out the window, too, if your house doesn't burn down or you have a crash. But, you know, if you need it, it's there. And I'd much rather pay a few pennies. I know people line up at Starbucks even before all this happened. Uh, and they pay, well, if you're there every day, I mean, uh, it could be a couple hundred bucks a month for your cup of Starbucks. But, you know, if you could spend a hundred bucks a month in uh, some supplements to help keep your immune system working optimally, I think a great investment. I think you need to think of that as an investment in your health rather than as an expense. A cup of coffee is an expense because it really doesn't do a whole lot uh, for your health unless you think there's some flavonoids in there that uh, are useful. But uh, I would probably suggest you invest the money in your health instead and spend the money on some reasonable supplements. Okay. Elderberry is wonderful with Hashimoto's. Um, we drink a little elderberry syrup every morning. I think there's this big thing that came out on the cytokine storm that somebody posted out there, and I don't know where that came from. So anybody that exercises or runs in the audience, if you think about that, um, you're going to kick up cytokines going for a jog, um, working out on your Nordic track, doing whatever you do for exercise. If you're doing 30 to 60 minutes of uh, fairly good cardio a day, you're going to raise your cytokines up. Remember, anything that increases inflammation in the body is going to kick up your cytokines. Inflammation helps the body heal. So it's about balance. You need inflammation to heal, uh, and, but you need inflammation to be limited. Okay, taking elderberry syrup is going to increase your cytokines minimally. It does do that, but not even to the point of a jog around the block. And so there is no comparison. And I think getting out and walking and jogging is helpful to your body. The elderberry provides so many other benefits. It's been used for centuries. And I think the simplest way to think about this is God put all these wonderful things on our planet to help us keep our bodies healthy and heal us. As long as it's not over-processed, I think it's a wonderful thing. We got into trouble processing a lot of things, and I think adding some elderberries in are a wonderful thing. Uh, I use them freeze-dried in a smoothie, um, and of course elderberry syrup is great. And um, the ones that are made with honey in them, um, remember you have all those wonderful healing factors in the honey as well, the propolis, um, and that's great as well, um, especially if you eat honey from local sources. So it's kind of a combined effect, boost your immune system and keep it healthy. Uh, so I think those are great things, plus it tastes great, you know, uh, why wouldn't you want to do that every day? So this whole cytokine storm thing has been kind of nutty. Do you have the bottle to show? Okay, well, we're out of our bottle. Yep. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, I'll put in a pitch for my daughter, Andrea. She sells her um, elderberry syrup. We stock it in the office, and uh, I think it's a really great product. Again, it's made with local honey uh, and organic elderberries, so I think that's great um, to add in. But uh, this whole cytokine storm, I think part of that came out of this whole COVID thing, because when you get any sort of a viral or bacterial infection, your cytokines are going to kick up. That's your body's natural defense mechanism. Where you get into trouble is if your body isn't managing it, and that's where we get into trouble with the immune system out of balance. And so it's all about the body being able to mount an inflammatory response. That's part of the healing. Think about spraining your ankle, but it needs to be limited. And so as the body heals, the inflammation settles back down again. And so, you know, the cytokine storm that's causing problems for people with a viral infection, that's what ends them up in the hospital with lung issues and other problems with that. 
Uh, and I actually think if you use the, site, the elderberry on a regular basis, it will help prevent that whole issue. So along with a few other reasonable supplements, you won't find yourself in that situation in the first place. Prevention, worth a pound of cure. Uh, those old sayings I usually have a reason. Okay, another question. Um, as far as mucus, uh, to help thin that out, um, I, I don't know, apple cider vinegar seems to be the cure for a lot of things. Um, and acetylcysteine is another thing that helps thin out the mucus. Bromelain has been used for years to thin out mucus. Uh, that shouldn't cause any issues with the lungs to flare up any sort of inflammation or injury with that. Uh, but those are all healthy things. The n cysteine actually helps support your immune system as well by giving your body the ingredients it needs to make glutathione, which is your body's primary detoxifier, and you need to be able to detoxify efficiently. And so uh, I take a small quantity of n cysteine and one of my other supplements uh, every day as well to keep my, uh, home, my uh, glutathione up to snuff. Um, one of the things I do want to add in with the glutathione issue, if you've got a temperature, remember that's Mother Nature's way or your body's way of killing viruses and bacteria. Don't go running for the Tylenol in particular because your body has to detoxify the acetaminophen or the Tylenol and you utilize glutathione to do that. If you're using glutathione to detoxify Tylenol, you don't have glut to detoxify the Tylenol, I'm sorry, you don't have glutathione to handle other detox issues in your body. And so I encourage you to think about sweating it out. If you got a fever, there's a reason your body's trying to get rid of something. Go lay down on the bed, throw on a couple of down comforters, and sweat it out. That's how we used to do it before we had Tylenol. Uh, yeah, or get in a sauna. That's another good way. Bake it out. Help your body along. So, yeah, no, not 135 degrees. You'd probably have to roast your brain with that. But the point being, uh, it's helpful to have a fever. It speeds the healing process. That's part of that whole inflammatory thing, like I mentioned. So helping your body help itself, I think, is a reasonable thing to do that. So those are helpful for thinning the mucus also. And the biggest thing, plenty of water keeps it thinned out. So if you're not drinking enough water, what's everybody say? half of your weight in ounces a day. So if you're 100 pounds, you need to be drinking 50 ounces of water every day. And that's quite a bit if you think about it. So most of us don't do well enough with that. And so cheers. Yeah, add some fresh lemon to it. It helps keep your body alkaline. Okay, alkaline body. That's part of the vitamin C also. Helps keep your body alkaline. Keeps it in healing mode. Another great modality. So half a lemon in your uh, juice in the morning and your water in the morning is a great way to do that. So cheers. Okay. Well, somebody asked, I don't know, it was the same person that asked that. Okay, so, okay, uh, dairy, okay. Number one, um, if you're talking about dairy, we're talking about cow's milk, right? Okay, so think about what God uh, made cow's milk for. Calves, not humans. Uh, cow's milk is a great substitute if mom can't give you breast milk. There's a reason she can't produce that. Otherwise, I really don't think we should be drinking milk. Um, I use a couple of teaspoons of heavy whipping cream in my coffee every morning because it mellows the coffee. Um, gave up the sugar years ago. But beyond that, drinking milk, not a good thing. It does make the mucus thicker. Uh, I'd find an alternative. Almond milk actually produces or supplies more calcium uh, than cow's milk does. Uh, so uh, there's some underlying reasons why, but I'm not a fan of milk. Um, I think it's great for calves, but for human beings, uh, get your water with a glass of lemon in it instead, or juice of lemon in it, sorry. Um, yes, our office is open. Um, obviously, we're practicing backwards right now, and let me explain. I mean by that. Normally we see sick patients and try and get them well. Right now we're trying to keep the sick people out, so we're doing telephone medicine with people to try and help them on an outpatient basis. We've had a few people on early starts with viral things, put them in a single room by themselves to do some IV infusions that we talked about earlier, but we're trying to keep the healthy people healthy, and that includes my staff, so we can continue to help keep healthy people uh, going. 
Um, and so we're screening as people come into the office with a temperature. Um, and that's why I was joking about having the drive through vitamin D testing out in the parking lot so we could uh, really help people figure out where they're at uh, and get them started on vitamin D safely. Um, and I think that would just be a great thing to do with the community. So more news on that next week. We'll push that out once I have the final answer on that. I just don't want to get everybody in trouble doing that. So if we have 20 people in a car in a parking lot, that may be an issue, I think. But I think uh, trying to do healthy things would be allowed in that sense. So more news to follow on that. We'll push that out on the Facebook page once we've got the information um, and let you know about that. But if we can come up with a way to provide uh, some uh, vitamin D levels uh, at a really reasonable cost, we're going to do it. So stay tuned. Right. So again, uh, Ann just reminded me next week is uh, fix your gut, save your life. We're going to do that in the live. I'm going to have more tips on things we talked about today, some specific things so people can start to understand the importance of the gut health. Um, and I think we really underestimate how important our gut health really is. Uh, and the gratifying thing is, as um, my patients learn about that and they start to heal their gut, uh, we turn around autoimmune disease in the office on a regular basis. So Hashimoto's, uh, lupus, rheumatoid psoriasis, all these things can be managed with diet. And that's the crazy thing. You don't need to become um, a customer of one of the pharmaceutical companies that produces these crazy immunosuppressive medications. Uh, and actually, on a sad note, I just lost uh, one of my patients recently. She'd been on immunosuppressive medications for years for her rheumatoid arthritis. And I tried uh, for quite a while to get her off of that. Unfortunately, she did not. And she turned up with a very aggressive uh, uh, throat cancer that killed her in a very rapid time. Um, and it was very, very sad. But all these immunosuppressive medications for uh, underlying autoimmune disease well, they suppress your immune system. And when you suppress your immune system, cancer cells can get a foothold. And that's the sad thing is you need to understand the balance and what are you really doing. The thing to do is really to fix your immune system. And your immune system is your gut. And if you can fix that, your body will return to doing that. Um, you know, let, we'll dive into that a little bit more next week, but actually looking into some ways to check and see, do we have early circulating cancer cells in the body? Because we have to assume we do as we age, our um, immune system doesn't work as well, and we all have circulating cancer cells, but we want to make sure that those macrophages are doing their job, got up those cancer cells to keep us healthy. And that's really where it starts at, is figuring out where you at, what do you have circulating. You know, what drives me nuts about the traditional healthcare system is, and in particular about cancer, is we wait until we have cancer and we say, hey, sorry to tell you this, but you have cancer. Wouldn't it make more sense to monitor the body on a yearly basis with some simple lab tests to figure out, do you have uh, some cancer cells floating around? And there's some simple tests that we can do for that. Unfortunately, of course, insurance won't pay for it again. Um, one of them is done in uh, the Netherlands, and so we have to have FedEx the lab over there, but it's uh, done through an affiliate in New York, um, and it's not un un unreasonably expensive. It's 100 bucks, and it ties into the whole vitamin D receptor system. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more next week with the immune system. So uh, more news to follow on that, but we're starting to work with people that have uh, early stages of uh, cancer and getting their immune system revved back up and getting that back under control and beating it. Uh, great story. I just had a 91-year-old patient that came from my hometown of Fisher to visit me recently. And he, he says his longevity is because um, he put colloidal silver in his cereal every morning. He put a tablespoon of colloidal silver in his cereal every morning. And he said, my gut's in great shape. He came to see me for his knee pain, uh, which was awesome. But he's healthy otherwise, still drives at 91, gets out and does what he wants to do. Uh, and so there's so many simple modalities you can do to keep your gut healthy. And if you can keep it working well, uh, anything is possible, I think. You know, biblically, we lived into our hundreds, right? Now, we lived in a pristine environment back then without all the chemicals we spray on our field uh, right now and all the toxins we're exposed to. But I don't know. I think we can do better than we are. And like I tell my patients, my goal is to drop dead healthy at 100. 
Uh, I don't know that'll happen or not, but you got to have a plan because if you haven't got a plan, you're just on an adventure. And when I go shopping at Walmart, there are a lot of people that are on an adventure at Walmart with the stuff in their cart. So, uh, and that's the sad part. They easily change their longevity by uh, changing what they're uh, putting in their cart. But the good news with that is there's plenty more for me to buy to eat. <laughs> so, uh, kind of sad. Um, ultimately, any sort of influence. So the question was, does inflammation turn into cancer? Ultimately, uh, inflammation in the body, yes, will turn into cancer if it's unchecked. Like we're just talking about, immune system running amok uh, with inflammation is not a good outcome. So if you think about it, if you look at an inflammatory marker, and that's another thing we like to look at when we're thinking about heart disease and preventing heart disease, um, we look at inflammatory markers. If those markers are elevated, the goal is to bring those inflammatory markers back into the normal range. And those are simple blood tests that, well, your insurance will pay for. Um, and those are simple things we can do to measure it. So unbridled inflammation in the body long term turns into cancer. Also, you know, intermediate stops, diabetes, heart disease, anything bad in the body is ultimately based on uh, chronic inflammatory drive in the body. Not to mention it makes you feel bad. If your finger joints are stiff all the time, life isn't much fun. Uh, so really working on decreasing inflammation and where do you start with that? Get rid of the sugar and the carbs in your diet um, and you'd be surprised. In a month without all the sweets and the carbs, a lot of times a lot of the joint aches and pains and other inflammatory things in the body start going away. And I know it's crazy to think about that as a prospect to jump in and do it, but it can be done. So, yeah. So, a ketogenic diet would be a great place to start with that. Um, So simple things you can do at home to help with gut problems, um, like we talked about, more fruits and vegetables, adding those in, a simple thing to add a probiotic in. I've had numerous patients that have come in and said, I started a probiotic and some of my symptoms are better, better already, but then I've had some patients that started a probiotic and it made things worse. And that's just your body getting all these new bacteria in there. I mean, literally a probiotic is what, a capsule filled with bacteria and you're adding different bacteria in, and sometimes the kids don't like to play with uh, old kids in the block and so it can cause problems but I think adding in kombucha so a simple thing our body was designed to run on food that's the currency it works best with so the other things we mentioned kombucha bone broth all those wonderful things uh, in food form are great fermented vegetables um, pickles uh, somebody, somebody asked me the other day can I eat pickles yes but they have to be in the cold section section in the um, refrigerator section in the store. If they've been heated enough to be uh, stable in the center of the store, they've killed all the bacteria. That's how they remain in the center of the store for a while. Uh, and so when we all turn into zombies after we get this new vaccine we're getting, then somebody else gets to buy the pickles that have been there five years. Um, but simple things, fermented foods, probiotics, those are great places to start to heal your gut and get it straightened out. Start getting getting rid of the sugar and the excess carbohydrates is a simple thing to do. Other questions? Okay. Oh yeah, tomorrow morning on WSOY, I'm doing a little live program there. We're going to talk about uh, business and what's been going on in that. Um, it's 13.40 a.m., I think, or 103.3 FM, so Ann's got my thing, around 8.30 in the morning, so if anybody's up having coffee then, um, that I'm not going to be there, it's going to be radio, so I'm doing that from home, so I'll be having my uh, um, beneficial coffee in the morning, so um, please join us for that also, uh, and then next week, obviously, we're going to do that. So um, I just want to thank everybody for joining. Hopefully I got to answer a couple of helpful questions. Uh, like I said, join me next week. We're going to do the uh, gut health and immune. I'm going to do a deeper dive on some of the uh, other topics, and hopefully those will be more helpful for getting started with home tips. Um, and uh, we'll talk about how all this ties together. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, if you have suggestions for other things you'd like me to do uh, Facebook Live on, uh, we're learning, uh, like everybody else, that we're going to be doing a whole lot more things on the Internet than we used to. And my daughter's been trying to drag me kicking and screaming into the modern era for, uh, well, I don't know, a couple of years now. And so I finally succumbed. So 
here we go. It's going to be a new world. So, but if I can help push information to help keep everybody healthy and start to work on a better immune system, maybe we won't be quarantined. Uh, but I'll let you think, if we're doing this for this virus that's uh, new, what are we going to do next October when the influenza season starts again? Are we going to be quarantined from October through, say, March or something like this? Is this our new way of living? Or do we really need to come up with a different plan? I vote for number two. We need to come up with a better plan. We need to get ourselves healthy so we won't succumb to things like this, and then we can live our normal lifestyle. So that's my goal is to educate you guys, help you understand what you can do so you can all live your best lives. Um, and with that, thanks again for joining, and I'll see you guys all next week. Thanks. Good night.